Hi, Dr. Glorious. Uh, welcome. Thanks for being with us today. Charlie, try that again. Uh, hi, um, hi, Dr. Precarious. Thanks for joining us today. Um, <laughs> what are we going to talk about? Charlie, you nearly got there. Let's yes? try that one more time. Ah. Oh, come on. This is not supposed to work this way. <laughs> it's supposed to go the other way. Ah. Oh. Nobody embarrasses Charlie. Charlie embarrasses other people. Um, thanks for being with us, Doctor. Today we're going to talk about... My submission. Good for you. Yes. Come on. All right. It's on your badge. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Pretorius. Well done. Oh, Praise God. Phew. Did you get that, everyone? Dr. Pretorius. All right. We're going to talk today about images, aren't we? Absolutely, yes. And how we, gonna... we mirror images and how they affect our lives and change us. Yes, they do. They affect our lives and change us. When we look at things, we're looking at an image, aren't we? It's like a little projector thing going on the back of our eyeball and off to our brain. It's very clever. It's upside down, though, isn't it? Upside down, yes. Yes, then our brain sorts it all out. And, yeah, isn't that amazing? That how amazing. wonderfully are we created? The brain actually sorts it out. Whoa, that mm. is incredible. Mm. So, there's these ideas about images isn't there and about how we use images to become who we become and so in the bible it talks about us being made in the image of god it does and yes and there's these other people who talk about images and how we use images probably unconsciously in special ways to become who we become true and one of those would be Jacques Lacan, wouldn't it? And what does he say? He talks about a thing called the mirror phase. And the mirror phase is when we see other people do stuff and suddenly we can do it too. It's amazing. Wow. Charlie, Charlie, I've got a story about that. Can I share my story? Yes. Okay. So when I was growing up as a little tacker at yes. home, my dad was an airline pilot. And every time he moved from a smaller aeroplane to a bigger aeroplane, he had to do a whole lot of study. Yes. So my entire growing up years, I saw my dad sitting in his chair with all these files and these books and things that he was reading, fascinating drawings about aeroplanes. And I was absolutely enthralled. I'm from, enthralled. It was, so, it was actually amazing to watch him. But that's what urged me to actually study. So my entire life I've been happy. I've never been really clever, just worked hard. And I was happy just to sit around books because he amazing. sat around books and it was great. Really? Mm -hmm. I sit around books. It's a bit of a messy table. I Mr. Beck's not very clean and tidy, but you know, at least I get to sit around books. <sighs> That's really quite interesting. So I was thinking the other day about the boys with the mullets. All of a sudden the mullets are all gone. And I reckon probably Hallelujah. one of them... Well, I don't mind mullets myself, but, you know, but all of a sudden... Charlie, I think you're going to struggle them, to grow one. Yes, only because I'm plastic. <laughs> um, but all of a sudden, one of the mullet boys cut their hair, and then they all cut their hair. I think a light went on for them. And you know what? Mm. All of a sudden, they don't look like boys anymore. Mm. They look like men. Fantastic. It's I quite amazing. Absolutely and you know what? It. I have a friend, and his name's Ken, and I saw him working out one day, and all of a sudden I realised... I could work out too. And now look at my huge arms, Look doctor. at that. I know. That takes a lot of effort. It takes a huge amount of effort, yeah. and I would never have done it if I never saw Ken do it. Well, good on Ken. I know. Ken's yeah. quite incredible. So do you think if I watch Tiger Woods a lot, a lot, I might play better golf? Maybe. I think it would come with practice, though. Yeah, but do you know, Mr. Beck, he has a grown-up son who, when he was two years old, he got obsessed with skateboarding and he started watching skateboard videos a lot and he was doing ollies and nollies before he turned three without anyone showing him how kidding, to do it kidding. he just saw people do it and suddenly he was just he just got on a board and did it so do you think that's a light bulb moment or do you think that's just growing so. in skills i think it's a light bulb moment because he didn't Amazing. practice it he yeah. just got on a board and did it yeah so it's really quite that, incredible that is well good for him and how does he skateboard today well, he still skates, but he's not so interested in it anymore. Mm. But he was obsessed then as yes. a little boy. Yes. So the idea is that we see something outside, it triggers something, and it becomes a part of us, kind of, isn't it? It does. It tells us that we can. Yes. We can. We genuinely yes. can. That's right. You know what? Mr. Beck told me once that he's got a little brother and sister who are twins that are now grown up, like, you know, nearly as old as Mr. Beck, but they were little then. And... 
One day, when his little sister stood up, the brother looked at her and went, oh, okay, so he stood up too. Praise God, so they both walked. Yes, but it's really quite interesting, isn't it? Mm. All right, Mm. well, that was very, very good. Dr. Laborious, thank you for being with us. <laughs> thank you so much, Charlie. Can uh, we try uh, Dr. Uh, sorry, pre- sorry, sorry, pre- pre- Dr. Pre- Dr. Pretorius. Pretorius. Oh, well done. All right. We'll talk again next time about... We get, I want to talk about growth mindsets, how we right. actually see ourselves differently. All right. We'll do that. Thank See you, you next time. See you, Charlie. Bye. Bye.